Welcome to this video on trading price action patterns for the forex market, stock market, e-minis. This applies to anything you can chart. So one of the basic techniques of technical analysis that goes way back to the days of yore is the good old trend line. So let's take a look at trend lines. Let me show you why I never use trend lines. I do not like them. And I know that's a bit controversial since they are really a standard in technical analysis, but I find no use for them whatsoever, and I'll show you what I use instead. So trend line we would draw from a high to a high, for example. And then we'd say, okay, that is the trend, and we wouldn't want that trend line to be broken. But guess what? Oh, there it is. It's broken. And you'll see this quite often on charts when people draw trend lines. Then they draw another one because, oh, this high put in a higher high, so now they'll draw another one from there. But guess what? Oops, that one gets broken. But the market still goes down, doesn't it? So therefore, they draw on yet another one, and they'll draw it from there to there. And you'll often see these kind of fan patterns drawn. But really, what use is that? Because you're starting out at this lower one, and then it's broken, it's broken. And the reason that these don't work, the reason that they're really meaningless and completely useless, in my never-be-humble opinion, is because they're linear. Linear. And the markets are not linear. The markets are a bit messy. The markets are not that neat and tidy. Think about it. You've got people from all over, not just the country, but all over the world, millions and millions of people, and not only people, but computers and algo um, uh, programs and high frequency traders. You got long term investors, short term traders. Uh, you got people trading options on this stuff. It's just a big, huge, massive operation that's international, and therefore, how can you expect everybody to be on the same page enough to make a chart pattern linear? No, it's going to have some noisiness to it, some messiness to it, some randomness to it. You cannot expect it to be that perfect that you can use linear examples for trends, for example. They're going to be a little messier than that. So what I do, again, is just do a different technique that is also very, very common in technical analysis, and that's a moving average. I'm going to leave these three on here, and then let's just apply a moving average. So we'll go up here and, um, well, let's just do it this way. It's a little faster. So we'll go up here, and uh, one of the moving averages that I like to use is the exponential moving average. And I use a 15 period. There's different, obviously, periods that you can use. And I'm um, not saying there's any perfect one. There isn't. A lot of people will use something like a 20 period, and that's okay too. But just through experience, I have found that I like to use the 15 EMA. It works very, very well. So now if we look at the same example, when we drew the trend line from here to here, then from here, then from here. Well, look, if we just put the 15 EMA on here, 15 exponential moving average, it actually touches all these points. So this stays below it, that stays below it, that high stays below it, all three highs stay below it. And notice it's not linear, it wiggles. It wiggles. That's because the markets wiggle. In other words, using a moving average instead of a straight line, you'll see that moving average kind of wiggling and having uh, a little bit of flexibility to it. And that's because of the market movement before that, that it creates that into the future. And so, therefore, it is really creating a pattern that is more realistic. In fact, it's not only just realistic, it's actually based on actual price action from the past. And so therefore it continues to create price action that's more realistic into the future based on actual price action, actual price movement. And so therefore, what does it do? Well, it actually shows that, yeah, as long as we stay below that 15 EMA, we're golden. We're still in that directional move, in this case, down. And once we get above it, well, that's done that's done. Then we can look for another direction, or in this case, it just goes sideways for a while. All right, let's bring an example of the euro now, show that this also is true with Forex. We'll bring our ray here. And if we were to draw from this high to that high, um, okay, that's not too bad, but then we didn't quite catch it, so then you would draw from here to here, and then, oh, that one goes a little high, and maybe from here to here. Again, you know, you just start getting messy lines. So 
it just, again, is not really, to me, the optimal way to do it. And that's simply because, again, markets don't move in a linear fashion. In fact, um, what's even more interesting beyond that is that markets, um, we're not seeing all the data. You are not seeing all the data. Did you know that? So in Forex, I think you probably know that, spot Forex at least, because they don't, it doesn't go through a centralized exchange. So there's that issue. Uh, with stocks, though, a lot of people think, oh, it all goes through a central exchange. Uh, not really. Not really. There's a lot of variance there. Um, you know, I could go into a whole thing about dark pools. That, and that Dark pools are really important to understand because um, a lot of the big orders go through dark pools. That's pretty much why they exist, so that the big institutions can place their orders there and their volume not be tracked by people like you and me. So um, we'll talk, do maybe another video on that at some point. But that also creates some of the um, unpredictability of the market, which is pretty much the purpose of them. So anyway, I put my 15 EMA on here now, the black line, as you can see. And if we, let's actually make that a little thicker, just so it stands out more. We'll make it uh, with a four instead. And there we go, that's a little better. So now I still got my trend lines on there, but you see that the uh, 15 EMA, it wiggles, and that's fine, that's what we want it to do, as long as price stays below it. We don't have to sit there and redraw lines, and we're not pretending that the market moves in a very, very linear fashion. We're giving it room to be messy, giving it some room to fluctuate, which is what the market does. And therefore, because that's the reality of price movement, it's important for us to have a tool that accommodates that reality. So if you use straight lines, such as trend lines, so-called trend lines, then you're actually um, dealing with a misconception and you're putting your mind in an unrealistic expectation. And that alone can mess you up psychologically when you're trading. So that's a reason to not to use them right there. So if you like this video, please understand it's not free. Well, it's free on YouTube, but if you got value from it, you have a moral obligation to pay it forward. Share it with others by clicking the share button below and share it with your friends and family on social media. In addition, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon and leave a comment. That really encourages me to give you more free tutorials. Also, I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies called the rubber band trade. It has a very, very high win-loss ratio. It's a simple strategy. You can learn it in about 26 short minutes. Get the video explaining that trade strategy absolutely free by clicking on the image in the top left corner, or if you're on a mobile device, click the little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner of this video. And if you're not watching it on YouTube, there's a link below this video or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I'll personally email the video to you with the rubber band trade strategy.